my next video. Today we want to talk about cooking. Uh, cooking is so important when you live in a vehicle. You want to save money. You can't be going out to eat all the time. You want to eat a little healthier. And we want to talk about specifically cooking in an oven. Well, if you live in a car, an SUV, a van, you probably don't have an oven. There's not a lot of room in there for an oven. Uh, but there are things I really like to cook in an oven. You can see here I have fish sticks, and I really like fish sticks. I've always enjoyed it. I think they're they're healthy, they're reasonably inexpensive, uh, and to me it's a comfort food. You know, I grew up with fish sticks and fish and uh, mashed potatoes and fish sticks. That's a that's a thing to me, and so uh, I really like it. And I've missed not being able to make fish sticks. I've tried them on the mi they don't work in the microwave at all. Yuck, they're terrible. Uh, you got to have it in an oven, and so I have carried um, a solar oven, and it works fantastic. I've loved, I've had several solar ovens that I just loved, but they are really big. If it's going to work year round, summer and, and winter, it's got to be one of the big, expensive, good ones. And they don't fit in a van. I carried one while I had a, a van and a trailer, and I loved it, but as soon as I sold the trailer and moved into the van, it had to go. It wasn't going to fit. So I've been looking for a way to cook ever since. I also have a video on the Coleman uh, folding stove oven and I like it a lot it works really well lots of advantages um, but it's really big uh, it folds down pretty nice but once it's set up it's really big one of the things I do is I use my stove for my heat source I don't have a heater uh, and I'm a snowbird so I'm in the place where it's not terribly cold but cold enough I want some heat and I found just a one burner stove or a two burner stove to work really well just to give you a little comfort heating and you turn it on for a while, then you turn it off. It's worked really well. Um, but while I'm wasting all that heat, and so I've wanted to weigh to uh, use an oven on the stove while I'm comfort heating. And then in the summer, it's summer now, as you can see, and I just go outside to use the, the oven. So that works fine, too. It gets it out of the vehicle, and so I don't have a lot of heat inside in the summer. And so I tried the Coleman uh, folding stove, and they work really well, but they're enormous. Uh, I would have kept it and kept using it, except you just, it's too big to use inside your van for heat. Uh, and if you, I've got a video uh, testing it out, and that's what I conclude. It's dangerous. It's super, super hot, and it just takes up so much room. I was going to burn myself on that thing, so uh, there's no way that's going to happen. It would work fine outside. I've known people use them outside, uh, but you're not cooking, you're not heating with it. And I really want to be able to heat with the oven. I have found a solution. It's uh, stove top baking. Now, I've known people who use stove top baking for a while, but uh, they get around the problem with burning. Um, and, but I have found a way to make it work really, really well. This is an Omnia uh, stove top oven. It's a kit, and I'm going to open it and show it up to you. And you see it's here from OmniaSweden.com. And you can see here, it's OmniaSweden.com. I really, really like this stovetop oven. My uh, times working with it have been very good. I've done some baking with it, and that hasn't turned out so well. I think that's user error. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll show you some of the flops uh, as uh, bloopers on this video, but I have several of them. I've overcooked them, and I've undercooked them. And uh, so the baking hasn't gone well for me so far, but I've made fish sticks before. And that went well, and I'm hoping it will again. So the problem with, with cooking on top of the stove is that if the once the stove's on and you put something on there with the food in it, then the food in, is directly connected to the heat source, and the bottom will burn and scorch while the top is doesn't even get done, doesn't even start to get done. So you, you've got to find a way to make to even out the heat from underneath and from above if you've ever used a cast iron dutch oven what you've seen is they put the bottom in the coals and then they put coals on the top that works really well you've got a heat source top and bottom that's how they get around it but it's a big heavy thing and, and it's pretty specific this gets around the problem really well let me show you how it does it. Uh, and you see it all folds down really really small uh, so it has this part that goes directly on the heat source. So that's this is stainless steel. It sets on the heat source. You've seen I've been using it. It's got some uh, discoloration from the heating. And it goes right there. 
and it's got a big hole. What are you gonna do with that hole? That's not gonna help, is it? It really is the key. So that goes on there, and then this goes in here, and it's got a hole too, of course. And now, with the two of them, I got a hole. So the heat comes up, hits the bottom, and then rolls up right through that hole and comes out. What does it go then? Well, you put a lid on it, and that contains it, so it's got heat from the top and the bottom. It has worked really well for me so far, once I get it all figured out. Uh, and so, uh, heat source, then the food never touches the scorching hot heat bottom. And then, uh, this, this is what you, and then this goes on top. Next, this goes on top. And then the heat comes up and hits the top and is contained inside. And so then it rolls around inside there, kind of like a convection. It's not really convection, but that's the closest I can get. Uh, and the heat is then coming from the top and the bottom. So the heat's coming up from this, and it's coming down from having the lid on. It works really well from what I've seen. Uh, now this, just by itself, these three items are $67. This is the kit. And uh, kind of like a bunt plate, bunt, bunt pan, if you've ever seen those. So this is $67. And then you can add on these things, which I did. This is, uh, it's two, it's two liners. They're silicon, and they have not stick. These have worked really well for me. I've been very happy with those. Um, and I also ordered this. Let me show you how this works. So this adds a shelf inside. So now you can see that the food doesn't even touch the bottom. So if you put your food on here, it doesn't even touch, touch that, which is still, the bottom is still getting a lot of direct heat. Not direct, because the flame never touches it, but it's getting some, and that raises the food up a lot. And so, uh, and then these are just, you know, they're, they're not gonna stick. That's the great thing about them, and they do not. So, uh, I'm gonna make fish sticks today. So I'm gonna put that down there. And I'm going to put um, the uh, silicon liner on next. Oh, these are just uh, kind of fish fillets. You've seen these. I'm going to try some on top and bottom. So I'm going to put this on the bottom. On there. Then I'm going to put this on it. I don't know if this will work or not. This is an experiment. You know, that's the problem with, you know, if you just have a regular oven, you just put everything in there and you follow the directions 350 for 40 minutes and unless there's something wrong with your oven it's going to work fine uh, that's not true here this is kind of an experiment one of the things i've discovered is a problem is um, the heat because i can turn the heat up and down and there's not a number i can't set it to 350 or 400 or 425 it just goes up and down and you it is whatever it is this is a really cool little gadget. It's it's I got a USB port. I don't know if I've ever talked about this before. It's got a USB port, and it sparks. I don't know if you can see that or not against the uh, dark background. You see that electric spark there? It's cool. It always starts my gas stove, and I've chugged. I've never recharged it. I've recharged it the first time. I've had it for. I've had it a year. I've never recharged it. Uh, and so uh, let's see if we can get this thing going. So how hot is that going to get? Is that very hot? Is it medium hot? Is it incredibly hot? I don't know. It's a guess. That's the problem. Also, you got to make sure you get it centered in there. That was a problem I've had. But you can look down and feel the heat. And I got it pretty centered. And you put the lid on. We're cooking. <laughs> I think you might supposed to preheat it like you do most ovens. But why be normal? And so we're not preheating, but I think it'll work. And also, I, one of the one of the mistakes that I made uh, when I was baking earlier was I I found that one side got hot and one side got what didn't get quite as hot. And so one side was overcooked, it was not undercooked. One side was about right. Once it was one side was overcooked. So I think I'm going to turn it like every ten minutes. So my parents are for the south. Uh, my my dad is from Oklahoma. 
and my mom is from Arkansas. So they grew up with, you know, and they grew up on a farm and they were farm kids. And so uh, when I grew up, I didn't grow up there. We moved away when I was real young. Uh, I grew up with meat and potatoes every night. So we had, we had a meat of some kind, we had a potato of some kind, and we had a vegetable, canned vegetable of some kind. To me, that is cooking. That is comfort. That is home. But having an oven really expands your options. One other thing we ate a lot of was beans and cornbread. We had, we had beans and cornbread all the time. That is the ultimate uh, southern meal there. Uh, ham hocks, beans, and cornbread. And so I love cornbread. And the next thing I'll make and see if I can get it to cook right is Jiffy Mix. I love Jiffy Mix. And uh, so I'll try a Jiffy Mix and then I'll have, I'll have beans and cornbread one night. Uh, not homemade because that's more work than I want to do. Uh, but if you have a, a pressure cooker or an instant pot or an old-fashioned uh, pressure cooker, you can make your own beans and uh, you can make your cornbread on this. And that is really a great meal. And it's a very healthy and cheap meal. Uh, actually, fish sticks are pretty cheap. This is fish fillets. I, use, I often will have fish sticks. But this was like five bucks and it's four meals. So it's a dollar a meal for a meat. It's wild caught. It's... Um, it's pretty healthy. It's not minced. It's uh, it's fillets, and so I'm I feel pretty good about eating it. Okay, well I've 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 rambled on enough. I'll stop there. We'll come back in uh, in a few minutes. I'll turn it. We'll keep checking on it, and we'll see how it's how it's going. In fact, it's been probably nearly five minutes, and I'll just go ahead and turn it. Okay, let's try that. No harm done. So. We'll, I'll just uh, I'll just try that. So we'll come back here in a bit and we'll uh, check it, see if it's getting anywhere. So it's been about half an hour. Uh, it's been 35 minutes, a little more than 35 minutes. We got a bit of a wind came up, so I put on this uh, splash guard. That's what I use when I cook outside. It probably is a good idea. It kind of reflects some of the heat in back in, I would guess, and and keep it uh, maybe even cook a little better. I if you I have a video out how I use this in the for heat in the winter and what all i do is i put the splash guard around it and then put aluminum foil over the splash guard and that kind of creates a little oven i wouldn't cook with it but uh you know i could probably do that here and it would cook a little better but but it's looking done to me and we'll find out so we're going to call it good it's been uh, a little a little over 35 minutes it's got a little overdone there i think it's going to be fine because i i like my food well done I always have. Well, it looks good on both sides. That that cooked evenly on both sides well. The instructions call for it to be turned over. And so had I um, been in a regular oven, I would have turned it once. You know what I mean? Turn it over and then flip it so it cooks on both sides. So it needs that even in a regular oven. And it's not getting it here. This side looks... Uh, this was on the bottom. And it looks pretty well done. It doesn't look as well crispy as that. Oddly enough, yeah, no, that makes sense, doesn't it? This is uh, better done on the bottom. So the top, that's the top. And then the bottom is really crispy, well done. So the lesson learned here is the bottom ones cook faster and better than the top ones. And cleaning won't be bad because I've cleaned with... Um, I've cleaned this silicon up before. And man, it just really comes right out. Uh, uh, I think we got these done well. So I doubled the time. It calls for uh, 14 to 16 minutes, something like that, eight, 19 minutes. So I nearly doubled the time, 35. The bottom layer was cooked perfectly. Crispy on the outside, soft in the inside. That was cooked perfectly. I'm calling this an enormous success and if this is all it ever does for me I'll be very very happy because fish sticks I really like eating fish sticks they're wild caught um, they're pretty cheap they're pretty healthy I'm very happy with the way this turned out okay so we'll try some other things we'll keep I'll keep doing other things with the Omnia you can get it on Amazon I'll have links down in the description it's sixty seven dollars just for the base unit and then I paid extra. I ordered them individually, and I think you could buy better as the cheap, as the kit. So I I ordered um, so I ordered this separately and the two pack of the silicon separately, 
and uh, it was pretty expensive. You can buy everything as a kit for $114 on Prime, on Amazon. I'll have a link down below. And to me, this was money very, very well spent. Come winter time, when this is my heat source and my oven, I am going to be very, very happy with this. So I hope that helped you, gave you an idea some how you can cook at home. Uh, we'll we'll try and have a success with um, with uh, with uh, baking, and we'll let you know how that works. So eventually, we get it all figured out. And uh, thanks for watching. If you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. We appreciate your support and hope to see you down the road.